Hi, everybody. Pastor Paul LaFontaine and Literal Life Church in Petersburg, Michigan, would like to invite you to take the next half hour and enjoy some time in the Word of God. If you're hungry for more of Christ, we believe you can be fed, and we pray that you'll be blessed. Visit our website for more information at literallife.church. May God bless you, my friend, and may the music and message encourage you today.
charges have been dropped. I said for the blood of Jesus Christ, all the charges have been dropped. That's a good feeling. How many's ever been in debt before and somebody just wrote off the whole debt? You remember that feeling? Multiply that by a million times and that's what the Lord has done for us. Can you say amen? verse 9 now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week he appeared first to Mary Magdalene out of whom he had cast seven devils I'm going to read it again now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week he appeared first to Mary Magdalene it would seem like he would appear to some of the other popular ones, some of the other disciples first. But scripture wanted to identify and make it clear that the first one he appeared to was a woman. Didn't come from a good background. Delivered of seven devils. And he wanted to emphasize that out of all the disciples and out of all the people, the first one who gets to see him after his resurrection is Mary Magdalene, who was delivered of seven devils. I'll tell you, there's no seniority in this. There's no big eyes or little U's. It doesn't matter how many years you've been in the message. It doesn't matter if you come from a good background or a bad background. Can you say amen? It's so what God chose here and he says, you know what? I'm going to take this woman and I'm going to let her see me first. Amen. And then I'm going to tell her, you go tell my disciples I'm alive. Yeah. But I want to pick up something here after, right after our Lord died that's a part of the journey that I don't want to miss. There was a follower of Jesus named Joseph of Arimathea. And he was a very wealthy man who went right away uh, after Jesus uh, died on the cross and his body was taken down from the cross and he went right away. I don't know the time he went, but I know he went and appealed to Pilate. And the Bible says that he, one place it says he was begging Pilate. Another place it says he was bold with Pilate. And so you got to imagine just the scare maybe that might be in him to go and do this because the followers of Jesus were looked down on. Some of the disciples were hiding. They didn't know what they would do with him after Jesus died. But this man had a boldness. He was a wealthy man. He had a boldness to go right before Pilate and say, listen, I'm begging for his body. I want his body. I want to be able to take it. I want to, would you do it? And the Bible says he begged, so I don't know how long it took him, but he begged enough and was bold enough that he got permission from Pilate to go get the body. And so he went, he took the, went and took the dead body of Jesus and he took the body and he bought some real expensive linen and he wrapped that body carefully. In a minute, I'll talk about how they uh, had the spices and they would do that to the body to uh, be able to, for, for different reasons. And I'll just get to that in a minute. But he took it and he carefully just uh, wrapped the, put spices and wrapped the body in fine linen and gave Jesus a proper burial. And he gave his own uh, tomb to Jesus. In other words, he, he, he had a tomb that he had purchased. It was also in a very wealthy, expensive area. And uh, Joseph felt to give his own tomb that he had been no doubt paying on or already paid for to give that to Jesus. And so we have the natural side where he's wanting to give him a proper burial and take care of that body. But you got to think that some of these people are kind of acting by a revelation within them too to make a preparation of a place because you know that deep within them there had to be something that believed when Jesus said, in three days I'll rise again. 
So there's two things going on. They're doing it naturally to take care of the body. But at the same time, their actions and what they're doing is actually walking in the scripture. He gave his own tomb. He had purchased. And, and of course, Jesus would only be borrowing the tomb for three days. But it's amazing the actions of here, Brother Joseph. Jesus made no prior main arrangements for his burial. We don't have any scripture that says that Jesus called Joseph or called different ones from the cross or before. He didn't have any meetings where he made a, a, a arrangements for his burial because he knew he would only be here temporarily. So he's not calling ahead and said, I want you to do this. And Joseph, I'd like you to get me a tomb. I'm going to need it for three days. And so if you do this and do that, there's no instructions for that. So Joseph is acting on his own and he goes and does this on his own. Jesus made no prior arrangements. And, but, but the thing is that we want to get to this. All of this was happening by the word of God. And I didn't see it till Friday night when Brother Brandon was reading through the scriptures in Isaiah 53 and many scriptures as each one of those things took place and he was wounded for our transgression. He took the stripes upon his back. It's all in the word. So every move that Jesus made, especially at the end of his life in the last few hours, it's scripture after scripture after scripture. This was not happening just because men were doing it to him, but scripture was being fulfilled over and over and over again. Even when Jesus spoke the words, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? It's all been spoken before. God prophesied of it before. So he's, we know that Jesus was walking in the word even in his death. But I didn't see it till Friday night because Brandon read one of the scriptures in Isaiah 53. And we see all the prophecies of Jesus fulfilling over and over again. But there's this scripture in verse 9, I think it is. And it says, and he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit found in his mouth. And when he read that, I thought, my, isn't that amazing? So it's not just Jesus fulfilling the word, but others are walking in the word as well. And I was just wondering how long it took our brother Joseph to discover. I don't know if he discovered it three days later. I don't know if he discovered it later in the upper room because he was there. But later on, he must have discovered that not only in Isaiah 53 while he was reading, not only was Jesus in there, but Joseph was in there because he provided this very wealthy place for Jesus. It talks about the rich, and it says he'll be with the rich in his death. I wonder if Joseph said, no, you know what? That's me. A few days ago, I did all that because I wanted to do it on an honor for Jesus' body. I didn't realize there's a scripture about me. I'm walking in the word every day. I didn't know it, but I'm walking in the very scripture. Just like Jesus. I understand, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? I understand Jesus' place in the word. I see how he come and fulfilled all that. But once you see yourself in there and you realize you're walking in the word, I tell you, you get a revival in your heart. This Mary Magdalene, she, she wants to stay close to Jesus even though he is dead. So there's very lit, little written about Mary Magdalene, very little, just one or two verses. On, that's her biography. But she is named, uh, she's named in all the places, all four gospels, her name is there. We've only got one other scripture for her about her life being delivered to seven devils. That's it. That's her biography. But in all the gospels, she's mentioned at the, at the crucifixion. She's mentioned as Jesus is walking down the Via Della Rosa, the way of suffering. She, she was at the crucifixion. She was at the foot of the cross with Jesus' Mary, Mary's, uh, uh, Jesus mother Mary, uh, as far as how we look at it. And then, and then she was there. And then they had to go home after she watched him die. They watched him take the body down. She was there through all of it. And, and then she went home because they had to stay home for the Sabbath. They couldn't do any work. But the prophet refers to going, going home. The scripture refers, excuse me, the scripture refers. She goes home Friday night and with Mary, they begin to prepare spices because they're going to go be near that body. After the Sabbath is over, they're going to go give spices to that body. She wants to be near, she wants to be near that body. I don't understand it. Carnally, you don't understand it, but she wants to stay near that body. Even though everything says he's dead, he's finished, he's done, she still wants to stay near the body of Christ. I say this real clearly to you. I don't care what's going on in your life. I don't care how low it's got, and I don't care how hopeless it seems. You know what you should do? Stay close to the body of Christ. 
Your answer is not to distance yourself and have an arm's length relationship and go out there. No, it, your answer during those dead times is to stay close to the body of Christ. Amen. Doesn't the Bible proclaim that as we get closer to the rapture, we should not forsake the assembling of ourselves together? And so much the more as we see the day approaching. Why? Because we're in resurrection time. We're not 30 years ago. We're closer to resurrection time than we've ever been before. And this woman, an ill-famed woman that come to the Lord, she just wanted to stay close to that body. So, you know, she is named in all the places, she, in all the resurrection places in the closing hours of Jesus. That's when she's named Mary Magdalene, Mary Magdalene. In other words, she may not have a name. She may not have been somebody, but she popped up at the most important time. And that was resurrection time. He's alive and well this morning. He changes our life. He changes our countenance. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter what you feel. The deepest depression can be lifted by the power of resurrection this morning. So the small bio that is of Mary Magdalene is Luke 8, chapter 2. That's all we have. You guys could pull it up. Luke 8, chapter 2. And uh, it says, this is about Mary Magdalene. Just if you wanted to know what's said about her. It says, and it came to pass, verse 1, afterward that he went through every city, village, preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom. And the 12 were with him. And certain women which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities. How many of you raise your hand and say, I've been healed of infirmities and spirits Amen. because of Jesus? Amen. Certain women which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary called Magdalene, of, out, of, out of whom went seven devils. And Joanna, the, the wife of Shusa, Herod's steward, and Susanna, and many others. I like to go into each of these lives and see where they come from. Herod's steward, my goodness, Herod's steward, the wife of Herod's steward, Susanna, and many others, which ministered unto him, Christ, of their substance. But you see now, that's all that's written out of her life, but she's all over during the time of the resurrection. Amen. She's there. Yes. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? And guess what Mary could say? I was really there. I was there at the cross. I was there when he died. I was there in between. I ran. I got up early Sunday morning. I don't know how early you got up this morning. She ran. She got there as quick as she should. And she could say, I was there when he come out of the tomb. And I was the first one he appeared to. Then she had to go tell 12 disciples. I need to stay in my notes here and preach this, but I can't help but say it. Come on, She's the one that had to go, this woman, the woman. We don't listen to a woman. <laughs> you know in the culture, even the Jewish, Jewish culture, there's a, just a bit of that. You can't deny it, you know, and it just, it's man, they get proud and they don't treat their women right and stuff. So, but here's a woman and Jesus says, I'm going to appear to her first and I want her to be the first witness of my resurrection and she has to go tell the disciples who by the way are hiding they didn't run towards the tomb they didn't want to be around the body they had basically given up and jesus said you know what you've seen me i want you to go into the house of those disciples and you be the one say i've seen him he's alive Lord, are you sure I want to do this? Are you sure I, you want me to do this? I, I'm a woman. They're not going to believe me. And guess what? They didn't. Right, right. Yeah. And then Peter and John, I think it was, finally decided they started to run towards the tomb. Right. Found out he wasn't there. The woman's telling the truth. She's the first witness. I'm saying Jesus chose Mary Magdalene to be the first one to get to see him and the first one to witness his resurrection. So you think this morning you're unworthy to witness. You're unworthy because of your life. You can't say nothing. Get the preacher to do it. Call Brother Paul. Somebody's asking me a question. Call Brother Paul. No, don't call Brother Paul. Tell how the candle got lit yourself. You be a witness to Jesus Christ.
And so then when Joseph went to get the body there on Saturday, um, the name Nicodemus pops up and he wants to go with Joseph. Joseph, you're going to get the body. I want to go with you. I'm going to buy some expensive spices. This is all in your Bible now. I'm going to buy some expensive spices because I want to value the body of our Lord. Can I go with you when you go get the body? You got permission. I'm going to go and I'll help you work on the body. We'll put it in the tomb. And so Nicodemus, does anybody remember that name? Who came to Jesus, a, a ruler, a Pharisee in Israel. And he came to Jesus by night secretly. And he asked questions about the new birth. And he got his questions answered. Amen. But there's no other scriptures for him. We don't see him again. There's no biography. There's no, there's, no, there's not even he was delivered to seven devils like Mary Magdalene. But his name pops up and he wants to buy the expensive spices to anoint the body of Jesus and to, to get it, to prepare his body. He pops up again at the end. Yes. Didn't Jesus say the last shall be first? and the first shall be last. Didn't he give the parable of each worker getting a penny and they worked and worked and worked all those years and then some workers in the city said, we don't have a job and, they, and, the, and the, the king says, well, go to my person in charge and they'll give you a job. And some of them came the last hour and they went and got a job. And when payday came, they were all paid first, by the way, paid first. The last minute dudes got paid first the same amount as all the other ones that had worked for years. And all of them said, what's up with that? Dude, that ain't fair. What's up with this? We worked all these years striving. We've labored. We've done this. And, th and this new kid on the block comes along. He's only been around an hour. He come at the very last minute. Nicodemus, where have you been? I don't know, but I'm here now. I want to honor this body. There's something in me that says it's truth. I don't know all the details. I don't know any of the scriptures. I don't even know what I'm doing, but I want to honor this body. I want to stay close to this body. Last minute believers coming in. Listen. God has his own leadership. It, it's not about position. If it had been about position, Mary Magdalene was not qualified to be the first to see our Lord. Jesus was saying this is not about position. It's not about the leadership. It's not the big eyes or little U's. It's those that are staying close to me. What if Jesus were to come down and ask me who my leadership was? And then he said, no, 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 no. And he grabs all you guys and brings you up front. He says, Brother Paul, you know what? I choose these guys. This is your leadership. Thank you. Just blow our minds. Oh, yeah. Isn't that can't happen? Can't happen. Well, one thing I learned about these guys and the girls too is that they're not struggling for positions. They're just enjoying being here. Being at Sunday school, I'm sure they might resist sometimes, but for the most part, they just want to be around. They just want to be here. And I think that's honorable. But what comes out of these guys is purity. There's not a struggle for them. They learn that when they become an adult. If they come closer to the kingdom of God. It's all about just stay around the kingdom of God. Just stay around where he's at. It's not about position. It's not about position. It's about character. It's about loving our Lord. The Bible shows Mary went home Friday after she was dead and her and her other, the other Mary prepared spices. They did nothing on the Saturday, the Sabbath. They weren't supposed to even prepare spices, but they did it on, they did it before they prepared it and they got up early Sunday morning. They prepared them on Friday, got up early Sunday morning and there's, you'd be, you'd be surprised how many scriptures speak about this. It's in the Bible. Got up early, got the spices, and in history now, the main reason a dead body was anointed with spices was to control the smell of de decomposition. Yeah. Jews did not practice embalming, and the funeral spices were a way to help minimize unpleasant odors. That's why Martha at the grave of Lazarus, she was saying something like that, that if you opened up that, it's, it's going to smell and different things because they didn't embalm, and so she was worried about that. But the, 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 the spices the women brought to Jesus' tomb 
were intended to eliminate such an order and to honor the body of Christ. Why are they doing all that? Well, it's to honor the body of Christ. And I'll tell you, when you do the simplest little things to honor him, he doesn't forget it. So it's honor. Never find these actions at this time by the disciples. The scripture shows the disciples crying, mourning, hiding. But these here women wanted to be around the body of Christ to honor the body of Christ. And this may not fit, but I just want to just stay close. I, I just want to, I'm taking this lesson out of this this morning. Because I know we're in the days of the time of the final resurrection. How many believers would agree with me? We're in the times that could happen any time that the saints shut up here and we're getting out of here. We're closer than we've ever been. And this may be a strange sermon to you, but I just want to say, I want to stay close to the body of Christ. I'd rather be near the body, honoring it, than out doing something else right now. That's where I want to stay close to. If you get my message today, it's staying close to resurrection power, staying close to the body of Christ. This thing is almost over. It's not time to fight, can you say, man? It's not time to fight over doctrine. It's not turn, time to take stabs at other churches. It's not time to fight. It's time to love one another with divine love and stay close to the body of Christ. Stay close to the word of God. It's time to honor our Lord and his body like we never have. Yeah. Honor means you don't speak against it. Honor means you don't gossip against it. Yeah. Honor means you have high respect yeah. for your brothers and sisters. Yeah. This is what we need at this closing yeah. hour. We need honor for the body of Christ because resurrection is about ready to take place. Thank you for watching our message today. If you would like more information, please contact us by visiting our website, literallife.church. And if you would like to come and visit us in person, consider this your personal invitation. We're just 15 minutes north of Toledo at 11,100 Summerfield Road in Petersburg, Michigan. God bless you, my friend, and have a blessed day.